bloom where he has planted you. So I encourage you today, saints, gather where your family's at. I'm not talking about your blood relatives. I'm talking about the brethren. The true brothers and sisters are those that do the work of the Lord, the will of the Lord, and follow the way of the Lord. Become that beautiful flower. And bloom where you're planted. Quit worrying about um, replanting yourself and just stay grounded and rooted in the Lord. So saints, today I just wanted to share with you how amazing the Lord is. I got a word from another sister not long ago, Jeremiah chapter 9 verse 10. And I told this sister, you need to start praying for people to be saved and that the Lord will have mercy on the shepherds. Whether you are a, a leader or whether you are lead, uh, a shepherd of a church or a shepherd of your home, wherever your ministry is, you are supposed to be feeding and leading with the Word of God. And then the word that she had given me in Jeremiah nine ten that she received, and uh, I told her to start praying for, for the shepherds and the pastors, it confirmed for me and solidifies where I'm going and visiting different places that people are literally dying in buildings. They are listening to sermons and their lives are not changed. And it's not the shepherd's fault. It's usually the person's fault because they just don't have an understanding. They haven't been taught. Now, if they've been sitting under a certain shepherd for many years and still have no growth, then we got to point the finger at the leader that is leading without feeding. Saints, you either going to grow and get fat and sassy and, and, and be a threat to the devil or you're going to sit there and you're going to get fatter and fatter with no proof that the Holy Spirit exists in you. So I got to thinking about that, about souls going to these buildings and uh, literally home is where family gathers. You know, if the family's gathering but the family ain't growing and you remain toddlers or you remain um, in middle school think about that if your family never grew to maturity something's wrong so what i'm saying today saints is if you're planted in the right place you're going to have growth there's going to be more flowers okay you're not going to be the only one that's growing there should be growth in the entire body not just one part so i got to thinking and praying about it and i said lord Explain this to me, why people are gathering where they think they're in the right place, but they're not growing in grace and knowledge. They're not literally growing to maturity. They're remaining infants. They're remaining um, babes in Christ. They're remaining toddlers. They might get to a certain growth, like um, a middle schooler, and then their, their growth is stagnated. And uh, so, yes, we need to pray for the shepherds that they not be just leaders but feeders but we need to pray for the people so the lord explained it to me said i give the young ones the babies a place to feel my presence leslie they don't know how to feel me outside the four walls because they don't have enough understanding of who i am so they gather to where they can feel good but then i said lord when do they grow up and know that the church is not the building that they are the church well, he revealed to me they come to the building so that they are reminded that I have forgiven them. And they literally need tangible evidence. And the building that they meet in literally is proof of my existence because they don't realize a lot of times that I exist in them. I exist through them. They don't understand that I use them as my hands and my feet and my voice for the voiceless. And just as the Israelites needed an idol and something that they could touch or see so that they would have evidence of their little faith, saints, sometimes we make church an idol. We make that building an idol. We make that pastor an idol. We make our church family an idol. 
If you can't remain in peace and blossom outside the four walls, then the going to the church and going to the gathering and going to the fellowship, it gives you a feel good and you, you want to go there. But if it's becoming an idol and that's the only time you feel God's presence and that's the only time you're doing anything for the Lord, then it's time for you to get in the word of God and grow up. If you're going to be a blessing, then you're, you're starting to become mature. But if you continually go just to get a blessing instead of being the blessing, then you need to check your growth. Are you bloomed? Are you putting off that beautiful smell? Are you exuding that colorful uniqueness that God made you? Or are you still in the seed stage? Saints, the seed got to die before it can bloom. So if the Israelites needed an idol that they could touch and see and feel and, and know that it was real, that was a, you know, they had some faith, but they had little faith or weak faith. So I am encouraging you, if you have little faith or weak faith, then it's time for you to get alone with the Lord and let your seed blossom to a mature plant so that flowers can be harvested. See, Moses caught the Israelites worshiping an idol when he came down off the mountain. And the Lord had already warned him, dude, you know, I'm just paraphrasing this. So, you know, get over it. Don't hyperventilate. Dude, look, look at what they're doing. Moses is like, oh man, what is wrong with these people? Yeah. Well, they needed it. They needed something they could touch or see so that they would have evidence of their little faith. Moses did what Moses does. He intervened for them. Without one to intercede for them, they would have been on their own in the wilderness. They would have been easy prey. They would have perished. So say what I'm saying today is if you're easy prey, if you have weak faith or little faith, I'm praying for you. I'm praying for you. I'm lifting you up to the Lord. I dedicate myself to the Lord and to prayer and to fasting to see the captives set free. So that you, be, you can become a beautiful flower. So Moses interceded. There are intercessors out there to keep you in your wilderness so that you're not attacked and, and you perish. Moses intervened. He interceded. He stood in the gap. He was willing to die for them. The Lord's hand was stayed against the Israelites. The Lord's hand has been stayed so many times against us and what I'm talking about is the Lord's wrath he will not continually strive with man Say sometimes the interceders are interceding not that the devil doesn't destroy you because the devil cannot destroy you without God's permission sometimes the intercessors are standing in the gap so that God doesn't destroy you he loves you he loves you he, he wants to have relationship with you but saints, if you're living in a sinful condition or a sinful state and you're willfully disobeying him, at some point the hand is going to be removed and the wrath is going to happen because he allows this. And my prayer is that you be chastened of the Lord and not die in it. But he chastens those whom he loves. Don't be like the Israelites. A bunch of them got killed that day. Okay? Come on, think about this. God is love, but he's also as, as merciful and loving and honoring and holy as he is. He has to discipline us. So I don't want the chastening to cause me to lose heart. So Moses prayed and he stayed the hand of the Lord against the Israelites. God was going to kill them all. Yes, we have Jesus as our advocate. But we have to confess our sins. We have to confess and repent. If you, if you go and you sin again, you have to repent. Past sins are forgiven. Everyone can be forgiven. Every sin that is repented of is forgiven. But it has to be a godly sorrow. 
Don't be like the Israelites that Moses had to pray for to stay God's hand. Just as Job had to pray for his three friends, pray for your friends, pray for your family. Pray for them that are lost and dying. Pray for them that are struggling in weak faith and little faith. Sometimes the Lord says, no more. And he removes his hand. He removes that prayer mantle. He removes that covering. He allows the enemy to come in like a flood. But saints, hopefully we learn the lesson and we cry out to the Lord and we gather and we become gatherers and not just gatherings. Let's not just be at a gathering. Let's be gatherers. He said, just like I did Jacob from that place I brought him from and put him into a certain place just like Jacob I will show you things not to be discussed with others sometimes he shows you something saints just so that you can pray for someone not so that you can go and gossip and tell their business and get other saints to help you pray for them you pray keep your mouth shut don't be telling people's business if uh, Sister Sally or Sister uh, so-and-so or Brother Billy or whoever, whatever brother or sister, certainly you might say their first name, but you don't have to air their dirty laundry, especially if you've been entrusted with their prayers. You know, I'll go and ask somebody for prayer, and then it gets back to me that they've asked somebody else. I'm like, I'm not going to tell you nothing. I'm not ever going to ask you to pray for me again because you, you went... And you told someone else when I asked you not to. Saints, if you're praying for someone, I'm sure Moses prayed by name for every single one of them, but he prayed for them collectively. And he didn't go around telling Joshua and this one and that one all their business. He went to the Lord. So if you're an intercessor and you're a gatherer with the Lord, you're going to dedicate yourself to prayer, to fasting, and you're not going to be telling people's business. Saints, when you stand to pray, ask the Lord to have mercy on his children. Many people that are in the churches are following men and women with their own personal agendas. The Lord will put his name, his name, his name where his family gathers. Whether that's in a building or a house or outside. He will put his name where he decides and he will gather gatherers together to gather you're not to just get a blessing you should be the blessing become the blessing pray for someone else use the gift that God gave you he will put his name where he decides and he will dwell in a clean temple he will not dwell in an unclean temple he might visit you from for, for here here and there a visitation and everybody says, oh, Lord, come visit us. He says, I inhabit the praises of my people. I, wanna, I want him to inhabit me. I don't want him to just visit. So, saints, if you are a house of prayer and you go to a house of prayer, bloom where the Lord has planted you. Your life will exhibit exactly what you practice. If you practice perfect prayer, your life will exhibit perfectness, which is maturity in Christ. Not being perfect without blemish, without spot, without sin. Because if anyone says they have no sin, then they lie and deceive themselves. Saints, none of us are perfect, but we can certainly be mature. And that's really what that word means. So if God can put his name on you, you're going to be different. You're going to be colorful. You're going to be shaped differently. He's got many, many, many seeds and flowers. And they're different and they're unique and they're all beautiful. Dedicate yourself to a life of prayer, saints, and your life will exhibit. Exhibit grace, mercy, holiness, righteousness, love, mercy, mercy, mercy. Don't ever underestimate the few minutes that you spend gathering together with your Lord throughout the day. 
He said, I am constantly with you. When you're looking for my touch, I am in you, my child. I am in you. Ask me whatever you will and it will be done for you. Enter into my name. Become the tabernacle of testimony. Gather together and become a gatherer, not just a gathering. Saints, I love you. I plead and apply the blood of Jesus over you. And I pray that because you are Christ, you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. God bless you. I love you. Have a beautiful, colorful day. In Jesus' name, is Sister with a Testimony. Have a wonderful, 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 amazing time with the Lord today.